Therefore, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. The Durham Catholic District uh, School Board has embarked on a new three-year plan to support both students and families impacted by poverty in the region of Durham. Speaker, the board's poverty action plan, together for hope, lays out several measures. For example, enhancing after-school programs and raising awareness of the impacts poverty has on student well-being and school achievement. Speaker, gathering feedback from families affected by poverty is a crucial component of the board's plan to provide a better understanding of what supports are needed and where. Speaker, every student deserves the opportunity to achieve excellence regardless of their background or upbringing. My congratulations to the Durham Catholic District School Board, the Director of Education, Ann O'Brien, Janine Bauer, the Superintendent of Student Services and Safe Schools, and all the other hardworking education workers involved in the development of this groundbreaking plan that will make a substantive difference throughout the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Spe Speaker. Today I rise to stand in solidarity with 2,300 brothers and sisters of Uniform Local 444 who have been on strike for nearly a week at Caesars Windsor Casino. I am speaking to this issue today because I have been in Toronto and unable to make it home to visit the picket line. I will join these workers when I return to Windsor, and I want them to know that I support them in their fight for a fair deal. Speaker, making the decision to go on strike is never an easy one. Walking that picket line is a sacrifice. You sacrifice your time, your pay, and families are impacted. We know that these workers just want to get back to work serving the casino patrons and making sure the visitors have an amazing experience. They want to get back to work. I was incredibly touched to see photos of the picket line from yesterday. In honour of the horrific Humboldt, Bron Humboldt Broncos tragedy, workers on the line wore jerseys, carried signs and hockey sticks. It was an amazing display of community spirit and togetherness. So I want to thank our striking 444 members for that incredible gesture and send my sincere, sincere support and solidarity for their efforts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak to uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day, Yom HaShoah. Last night, I attended uh, the Yom HaShoah community commemoration uh, hosted by Sharei Tefillah Congregation, the synagogue in my riding. Participating organizations were the Israeli Foundation, the United Hebrew Schools uh, Choir, Bialik uh, Hebrew Day School Choir. There were a number of survivors there, Mr. Speaker, who gave testimony to what they had witnessed as young children back in the 30s and 40s. And they talked about how the Nazis uh, from 1935 to 1945 slaughtered their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their grandmothers. They slaughtered and murdered six million human beings that were innocent. They slaughtered them because they were Jewish. They were there to say this should never happen again. Six million Jews who were forced into gas chambers in Auschwitz, in Dachau, Bursen Belsen, beaten to death, executed, uh, buried alive in these death camps all across Europe. This went on year after year while the rest of the world stood by and did nothing. They did nothing. They knew the slaughters were taking place. Men, women, and children were being slaughtered, and they did nothing. That's what we want to pay, pay tribute to today, and remember that. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, after, I'd like to move unanimous consent for a moment's silence for Yom HaShoah Holocaust Remembrance Day. The member from Eglinton Lauren is seeking unanimous consent to do a moment of silence, and it will be done after all of the statements are made. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And today, um, as we heard from the member from Eglinton Lawrence, is Yom HaShoah, which is Holocaust Remembrance Day. And we're paying homage and to reflect on what occurred during the Second World War to the Jewish community, the attempted genocide of European, and actually they wanted to take it across the entire world. Um, 
and uh, spread their message of hate um, from Nazi Germany. Um, well, decades later, unfortunately, we can't say that anti-Semitism isn't alive and well in the world. Uh, we had Chabad at Flamingo in my riding of Thornhill just a couple of weeks ago. A uh, synagogue had rocks th thrown through its front glass doors. And uh, we just had a couple of weeks ago as well in France, a Jewish woman, 85 years old, a Holocaust survivor named Marie Noel, who was stabbed 11 times and killed in her apartment in France. Uh, so I'm hoping, I see all the children up here in the gallery, and I hope that when they grow up to be adults, that we can eradicate hate against all communities and uh, that we can work together one of the best provinces, one of the best countries in the world, to ensure that a message is spread far and wide to say never again and uh, to really mean it. Unfortunately, it's not always true, Mr. Speaker. So uh, next week, we'll be commemorating Yom Hazikaron to remember the victims of terrorism and the fallen soldiers in Israel fighting for freedom, as well as Israel's Independence Day, Yom Atzma'ut, ending on a good note. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from, no, I'm, I'm coming full, full circle. Thank you. The member from Essex, by mistake. <clears throat> That's okay. Thank you uh, very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm honored to recognize a special an inspiring young man from my hometown of Bell River today. Justin Jewell is a 17-year-old musician who has recently undergone treatment for cancer. What makes Justin's journey so special is that while overcoming his own health challenges, he's used his gift to help heal other kids facing their own challenges. Speaker, we all know the power of music. It can fill your heart, it can heal your soul, but from the, mouth, the mouths of babes, it can heal your body. Justin began sharing his gift with other children while at the Children's Hospital at the London Health Science Centre, and the sweet sound of his mandolin or guitar filling the hallways of the hospital could be heard with his perfect pitch delivering some of the classics from Led Zeppelin and beyond. They were welcome and as a respite for other families and patients who were undergoing treatment. Justin was joined by his proud parents, Jim and Lorraine, who have helped encourage him to follow his passion since he first took up music. Speaker, I've had the great opportunity to hear Justin jam, and he's a force of nature. And it takes a special kind of person to face your own challenges, but yet find the strength to comfort and entertain others. I'm happy to report, Speaker, that Justin continues to make progress post-treatment, and it won't be long before we see him at the top of the Billboard charts making his own music and healing us all through his gift. Keep rocking, Justin. We are all so very proud of you. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Barry. Speaker, today I wish to congratulate the James Barker Band on winning the Country Album of the Year at the Juno Awards last month. The four members of the band are James Barker, Taylor Abram, Bobby Martin, Connor Stephen, and I'm proud to say that Taylor Abram is from my riding of Barry. The James Barker Band was created in 2013, and they got their big break when they won the Emerging Artist Showcase at Boots and Hearts in 2015, earning a record deal with Universal Music Canada. Last year, they released their first album and became the first group in history to top the charts at Canadian Country Radio with a song from their first breakout recording. In light of these accomplishments, the James Barker Band was nominated for five Canadian Country Music Awards, including Album of the Year, Single of the Year, Video of the Year, and Group of the Year. They were nominated for two Juno Awards, Breakthrough Group of the Year and Country Album of the Year, ultimately winning the prize for Best Album. I want to once again congratulate the James Barker Band on their Juno win and all their recent accomplishments, as well as to wish them continued success in the future. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. My apologies for my first miss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Tamil people of Sri Lanka have suffered ongoing persecution since independence in 1948. In 1976, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam were created as a military body to protect Tamil people. A civil war began in 1983. The Tamil Tigers became a strong and effective fighting force. In 2006, the Canadian government was persuaded to place a terrorist designation on Tamil Tigers. This had the effect of marginalizing Tamil people in the eyes of the world. The civil war ended in 2009. The Tamil Tigers were completely decimated. The Tamil Tigers will never be a fighting force again. The terrorist designation is not needed anymore. 
but the terrorist designation still exists. It is like a black cloud hanging over the heads of Tamils in Canada. It stigmatizes them. It prevents them from publicly mourning and remembering their fallen people at their remembrance services each year. In the interest of restoring respect and dignity to the Tamils in Canada, I ask the government of Canada to remove the terrorist designation from the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. Mr. Speaker, I have a motion calling for the removal of the terrorist designation from the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, which I will present to the clerk's desk at this moment. Thank you. Please feel free. Further member statements? The member from Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, Wednesday, April 4th was a great day for the people of Wellington County. That's the day we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Wellington Advertiser. We gathered at the Wellington County Museum and Archives, along with municipal officials, our new Senator Rob Black, our MPs, and the member for Wellington Halton Hills. 50 years is a remarkable achievement in the newspaper business, in a family business, or in any business. The Advertiser is more than that. It's an institution and an essential public service. To coincide with the celebration, the Archives launched the complete digitization of the Advertiser, from its first edition on March 12, 1968, all the way to 2018, or 2018. But we now live in a challenging environment for community newspapers. According to the Public Policy Forum, one-third of journalism jobs have been lost over the last six years. Last year in Perth Wellington, we lost newspapers in Stratford and St. Mary's. But there's also a bright side. Despite the difficulties in the, in, in the industry, many papers are still going strong. The advertiser, after 50 years, is still going strong. That's good for every community and every citizen they serve. The advertiser is a local voice, an independent voice, and an essential voice. I'm sure I speak for Ted Arnott and for every MPP of every party when I say congratulations to the Wellington Advertiser, its founder, Bill Adset, publisher Dave Adset, and everyone at this tremendous paper. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I rise today to discuss the certification of service dogs, their trainers and their owners. Service dogs play an important role assisting people with visible and non-visible disabilities. The dogs can be constant companions and help their owners stay focused, remain calm, complete tasks, and alert others if assistance is required. For, an, for example, Speaker, I know of a three-year-old, Kiana, who suffers from severe epilepsy and relies on her service dog to alert her family that a seizure is imminent. Her family refers to their service dog as Jerry, their guardian angel. However, service dogs can only serve their purpose if the dog has been properly well-trained so, uh, so that the owner has control over the dog. The dog must also demonstrate a high standard of training so that it can be safe in public. And unfortunately, this is not always the case. In the United States recently, a service dog bit a six-year-old passenger on Southwest Airlines as she walked to her seat. The dog was not provoked, rather the six-year-old was just walking by. Was this dog a certified dog? What steps did the owner take to prevent this from happening? Airlines need to know that the dogs coming with people have been properly certified and trained so that they can be allowed onto a plane. A similar case occurred in Ontario where someone was asked if they could pet the dog, and the, the owner said, no, the dog will bite. Well, if a dog is prone to biting speaker, it just really shouldn't be, it clearly wasn't properly trained. So we're having good work done in my community. Toronto Beaches Lions is training dogs with the annual care rally. It also is part of the Lions Foundation of Guide Dog of Canadian dog guides, and last summer they hosted the Pet Valley Dog Walk. Speaker, as Kiana's parents said, the service dog is a guardian angel. We must ensure that all dogs act the same. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Further member statements? The member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I feel exceedingly happy and uh, very privileged to introduce this legislature, the Muslim Welfare Centre, whose head office is in my writing. Mr. Speaker, I'm a very proud Christian, and yet my mentor is internationally renowned, the late Major Abbas Ali. He and his wife founded this wonderful organization in 1993. I was uh, elected as Toronto City Councilor in 1991. Therefore, you could say that the Muslim Welfare Center and I have grown up together in Scarborough. Major Abbas used to preach Service to humanity is service to Allah, God. 
The Muslim Welfare Center has been practicing his slogan for the past 25 years, helping needy people locally, nationally, internationally. Many in the center call me I'm their ambassador, and I feel very proud. Time will not allow me to list all the wonderful services this organization provides, so please let me say just a few items here. This year, more than 25,000 people have picked up the weekly food bank, and uh, they have distributed more than 260,000 meals on wheels. The Arctic Food Bank in Inuvit serves over 1,200 indigenous families, free medical care, international human relief, and the Muslim Welfare Center has thousands of dedicated volunteers and the very strong supporters for their good cause. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. To represent it. A point of order from the uh, member from Scarborough Rouge River. Carry on. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm so happy that uh, we're welcoming uh, Shakid Khan, uh, Executive Director, Muslim Welfare Center, and uh, Muhammad Rehan, General Manager, Muslim Welfare Center. Welcome to our legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Salam alaikum. <clears throat> we have uh, passed a unanimous consent to observe a moment's silence for the Holocaust Remembrance Day. I would ask everyone in the place to please rise for a moment of silence. God rest their soul. It is therefore time for reports by committees. Reports by committees.